espionage in America then and now. Every man is surrounded by a neighborhood of voluntary spies by Jane Austen. During the American Revolution, both the British and American armies employed spies to gather information about the enemy. George Washington recognized the importance of good intelligence and told his fellow comrades that good intelligence can help them win the war. Over time, old tactics became new ones with much more advanced technology at the hands of those spying for another country by greed, spite, or as a patriot of the country. Much more so grew the risk as well to pay out. Thus, after every war, there is intelligence that one country seeks to undermine the other. During the 1960s, espionage was at its peak. The U.S. and Russia were present in this ghost war behind an iron curtain called the Cold War. The two most formidable opponents of this time would have been trigger happy to retaliate and show strength using nuclear arms that would have likely ended more than an ideology, but also civilization. Spying was considered the key to the doors of secrecy, opening doors to secrets that could have served as an advantage. As time progressed from the 1960s to present day, issues regarding espionage would have thought to be minimal, but only have grown worse. During Director Hoover's reign of power in the 1960s, the mid-1950s counter aka their counterintelligence program, was notoriously used to spy, harass, and obtain information related to Martin Luther King Jr. and other well-known leaders in the civil rights era or anyone seen as enemies of the state. However, the program was able to accomplish some achievements, though it was later disbanded by Congress due to its ethical and moral controversies. Only this wasn't the end of counterintelligence itself. Consequently, during the Cold War, the FBI began investigations with suspected KGB spies within the U.S., those whose overall mission was to pass as the average, everyday American obtain information useful for the Soviets. However, the U.S. knew that the Soviets had spies and were able to construct methods to identify, prevent, and arrest some of those spies. The most influential prevention technique involved the media and spreading the word about communism and how it is a very dangerous ideology to America and its value. These cases taken from the files of the Army Intelligence Corps, the Office of Special Investigation, U.S. Air Force, and the Office of Naval Intelligence. Today we're going to show you three cases of attempted espionage by agents of the Sino-Soviet intelligence system. Now, for security reasons, certain names and locations have been altered. But essentially these things happen. They are typical case histories. Now, as these cases unfold, you'll recognize the way a Sino or Soviet agent operates both in finding someone vulnerable to subversion, as well as in their technique of ensnaring him, then applying pressure to get him to play ball. Now, we show you these cases so you'll be on your guard. Today, all over the world, there are thousands of Sino-Soviet intelligence agents with money to burn, looking for unsuspecting targets for exploitation among members of our forces. There may be someone right now taking your measure, probing for a vulnerable area. Whether it be loneliness, indebtedness, desire for sex, easy money, or the sporting life. In fact, everyone in uniform could be a target of opportunity for exploitation if he is vulnerable. Profit from these cases. Learn how to recognize the approach of an enemy agent, and if ever approached, what to do. Remember, these things happened. They may never happen to you. Then again, they may. Little knew the U.S. that the most infamous turned out spy out of greed and spite from the 1960s was a naval petty officer by the name of John Anthony Walker, who was responsible for the most devastating blow to national security within the U.S. and its Navy and it of its time. What makes it unnerving is the fact that his activities were undiscovered for almost 18 years. Surprising? I can't believe it either. With the technological revolution underway, advances in technology allowed many Americans and corporations to get their hands on technology that would have been originally been for the military. However, the introduction of the internet later embedded itself as a functional member of society. With that said, people got really creative and did a lot of good things, but also did a lot of bad things. Due to an increasing amount of attacks against our national security and business interests, cybersecurity became the new prevention technique against espionage from a wider scale. In total, approximately 20 billion is budgeted for cybersecurity from the U.S. government, compared to 124 billion spent in the U.S. private sector in 2020, according to Statista and the Internet Security License. That is five times as much as the U.S. government budget. Moreover, not all spy novels are entirely fiction nor replaced by this new technology. In fact, Eschmarch has advanced its methods. As Operation Ghost Story, an FBI investigation to KG spies within the U.S., had showed us, 
Spies have gotten tools crafted similar to devices that we only see in James Bond or Mission Impossible, but less flashy. Surprisingly, there are still potential traders of the US in our modern society who think espionage is easy to do covertly. For instance, there was a thing publicly released by the FBI regarding an ex-Navy nuclear engineer and his wife who tried selling classified documents to a foreign government in exchange for cryptocurrency using a peanut butter sandwich. A peanut butter sandwich. It didn't work out so well. In fact, Chinese almost hacked Russia's naval plans using Microsoft Word, so I give China the prize in creativity. Though, as I previously said, espionage has grown more complicated, unnoticed, and expanded its empire. The number one form of espionage present day is within the business interests of large and small corporations known as better as insider trading. Although espionage is not only limited to governments and corporations, but also small governments or individuals with missions content, ransomware is the most common reference to these attacks that you hear publicly. And it makes you think what a country is doing to protect us. Today, we have learned that the evolution and advancement of espionage has created the foremost headache in the protection of national security and the business interests in the U.S. Spying will never die and continue to become an escalating problem today. The only question now is if it is possible to fully protect the divine national security and business interests of the U.S. under these covers. Oh, well, we failed because of a tuna sandwich that got under our noses.